Suresh cannot see things clearly which are farther than 200 centimeters. Name the defect in his eye and prescribe a lens with suitable power. So it's given that this is Suresh's eye, that, uh, that he cannot see anything farther than 200 centimeters. So if there's any objects over here, all the way up to infinity, he cannot see it. So I'm gonna just mark that with red over here. So these are the regions where he cannot see clearly. But if it's within 200 centimeters, we're just going to assume that since it's not mentioned. If it's within 200 centimeters, he can see things. So I'm gonna put the green over here. And of course, once you go very close, you can't see it anyways. Even a normal eye can't see it, so let's ignore that part. So this is given to us. So now we have to name the defect in his eye. Can you think about what that defect is? Just pause the video and think about what, what this defect is. Well, since he can see things which are near to him at close distances, but he cannot see things which are far away, the defect is short-sightedness. So let's write that down. The defect over here is short-sightedness. He's near-sighted, so short-sighted. Short-sighted, or he is myopic. So we say Suresh has myopia, or myopia, any one of them. All right, the next thing we need to do is prescribe a lens with suitable power. So we are like the doctor over here. We have diagnosed his problem. We understood that he cannot see farther than 200 centimeters. Now we need to figure out exactly what power lens he should use. And before we proceed, how do we define power? Well, quick, let's quickly recall power is defined as the reciprocal of the focal length. This means we really need to figure out what the focal length over here is, all right? And you may think that, you know, okay, are we using a converging lens or a diverging lens? I can't recall that. Well, we don't have to worry about that at all. You know what we'll do? We'll only think in terms of object and image and we can figure out the focal length. So let's think about this. You see, Suresh cannot see farther than 200 centimeters. So we usually call this as the far point. Far point, all right? So another way to say that is we could say Suresh has a far point of 200 centimeters. That's the farthest he can see. But what is the far point for a normal eye, for an undefective eye? What's the far point? Well, an undefected eye can see as far as they want, right? You can see all the way to the moon or to the sun or you can see the stars. So far point for an undefected eye is infinity, which means to correct his vision, we have to make sure that Suresh can also see all the way up to infinity. Are you getting that? In other words, in other words, if our object is at infinity, so let me just write that down. If we have an object which is at infinity, then its image, our lens should bring its image to the far point. That's what our lens should do. Then, Suresh will be able to observe that object, all right? So from this, we understand that if the object, our lens should have a focal length in such a way, if the object is at infinity, then the image should be at 200 centimeters. The image should be at 200 centimeters. And guess what? If you know the object distance and image distance, we can figure out what the focal length is. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out what the focal length is given these two values. And remember, we have to use sign conventions, so please use sign conventions. All right, let's do it. We know our lens is going to be over here, so for sign convention, we need to first choose our incident direction as positive. So all the distances on this side will be positive, and all the distances on this side would be negative. So the object distance is negative infinity, but negative infinity, positive infinity doesn't matter. The image distance is negative 200 centimeters. And so if you use our lens formula now, so let me just go down over here, start using lens formula. So lens formula is one over F equals one over V minus one over U. So if we substitute, we will get one over minus 200 minus one over infinity. And that's going to be, well this is, this is zero. One over infinity is zero. So all we get is min one over minus 200, which means the focal length is negative 200 centimeters. That's the focal length. 
Notice, we have solved the problem even without thinking about whether we require a converging lens or a diverging lens. You don't even need that. Just think in terms of object and image. Now, by looking at this focal length, we can actually figure out whether it's a converging lens or a diverging lens. Again, pause the video, see if you can understand whether it's a converging or diverging lens. Just look at the minus sign and try to think about it. All right, let's see. Since the focal length is minus 200, the principal focus is over here, somewhere on this side, the negative side somewhere over, uh, I, I, 200 centimeters is over here, right? So we understand that the principal focus is over here. Now, which lens will have a principal focus on this side? Well, let's see. If you had a converging lens over here, then if you had a ray of light that goes like this, it would have gone converged like this, and so the principal focus would have been positive. So it's not a converging lens, it's a diverging lens. So we are going to be using a diverging lens over here, such that when you have parallel beam of light, the ray of light appears to come from here, like this, all right? But what we are asked is the power. So the power is just the reciprocal of the pr focal length, and we need to keep this in SI unit. So that's meter, so let's do that. One divided by minus 200. 200 centimeter is two meters, so minus two. So the power is minus 0.5 meter inverse, which we also call as diopters. So power is minus 0.5 diopters. So what we would do is we would give this Suresh a prescription written that, writing that he requires a lens of negative 0.5 diopter power. That negative sign itself is telling us it's a diverging lens. One curious question we might have is what if the object were to come closer? What'll happen then? Well, if you look at the ray diagram of a concave lens, then you see regardless of where the object is, its image is always formed within the focal length. And since our, our lens has the focal length of 200 centimeters, which is the far point, regardless of where the object is, the image will always be within the green region and Suresh will be able to see it. Now, of course, if the object itself were to come within the green region, if the object itself were to come somewhere over here, then its image would be even closer. You can see that in the diagram. And then maybe it'll be closer than the near point and maybe Suresh will not be able to see that because it's just too close. Well, in that case, he just has to remove his specs. And that's why sometimes you may have seen that, you know, people who are, you know, sh short-sighted, they might be wearing specs when they are looking at faraway things, but when, when they are reading a book maybe, they will just remove those glasses and they will read it normally.